Come on, how many know that whenever you're facing a battle, this, this thing, it isn't even fair. Because every battle you're facing, the cross has already gone to that point and defeated that enemy on your behalf. Church, whatever fight you're in right now, it's already done. The fight is fixed. We have the victory in Jesus' name. And we praise not because we want to get to victory. We praise because we already have the victory. Come on. How many know that the fight is fixed and the fight is won? If you know that, give God some praise tonight. Man, I'm so excited. I, I, I just, I'm so fired up right now. I feel like every time Pastor Marco speaks, I just want to fight a demon. I just want to punch the devil in the face. But you know why? Because God is giving our church battle plans. Because there is a war that we're in right now. The enemy is not playing patty cake anymore. The enemy is getting very, very bold about his agenda in our world today. And it's going to take a very, very bold church to rise up and say, I'm not going to let the devil stomp on my home anymore. I'm not going to let, let the devil take my kids or take my family anymore. I'm rising up according to God's standards. And I'm going to win this thing because I know that the fight is fixed and it's already done. I hope I have a few people in here that will praise God tonight and know that you have the victory in Jesus' name. Come on, give God some praise right now. Hallelujah. All right. I don't, I don't even have a lot of time. I got to like do altar call or something. Let's pray. I believe God has a word for us. I believe it's going to be a clear word. I believe God wants to speak to us tonight. And the Holy Spirit in this moment right now, I believe this. He's going to begin to make very clear what his will and his plan has been for you since the beginning. Tonight he has a plan for you. He loves you. You know that. The reason that you're here is because the love of God has been drawing you. You may feel like, no, I'm here because so-and-so dragged me. I'm here just to make my spouse happy. I don't want to argue. Well, that's not the real reason. The real reason you're here is because God loves you. He has a plan for your life. And he has a purpose for you. And tonight, I believe God is going to speak to us. And we're going to receive a word from God. How many are ready to hear from the Lord tonight? Father, speak to our hearts. God, we're not interested in any man-made opinion. God, we're not interested in my own thoughts or what I can think. Holy Spirit, we want to hear directly from you. So God, speak to us tonight. We honor you. We thank you. and We love you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And we all say, amen, amen. You may be seated. Give your neighbor a high five as you take your seat. Who's ready to jump into the word tonight? I'm not going to be long, but I believe what God wants to speak tonight is going to be very, very powerful and life-changing. My name is Pastor Christian. I'm the campus pastor here. Um, I just celebrated three years of marriage. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Three years. I'm so, uh, so... I'm so not new to marriage, but um, we're celebrating three years. So it's so low that I don't forget the year, right? I don't have to check my wife to see if it was three years. I, I know, three years. I could count one, two, three. But I just want to give honor to our amazing pastor. Can we give honor to our amazing pastor and his wife, Pastor Marco and Pastor Lisa, best pastors in the world. Tonight we're going to hear a message. And the title of the message is How to Walk with the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to say how to walk with the Holy Spirit. Let's jump right in. John 14, verses 16 through 18 says, And I will ask the Father, this is Jesus talking, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. Someone say, Holy Spirit, lead me. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later 
will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Skip ahead to verse 26. It says this. But when the Father sends the advocate, and who's the advocate? The Holy Spirit. When the Father sends the advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. See, one of the main purposes of the Holy Spirit is to lead us and guide us. He's showing us every day how to get to a specific destination. There's not a day that goes by that the Holy Spirit doesn't have a plan for you in that day. Every day that we live, the Holy Spirit already has on his Holy Spirit calendar, his Holy Spirit agenda, an entire plan just for you. And he has this agenda, and he's willing to lead and guide you into everything that he has blessed you and planned for you and ordained for you. But it's very important that we learn how to walk with him. Because if we don't learn how to walk with him, how to hear his voice, how to every step we take to, to let the Holy Spirit guide us, then we will find ourselves in a position of confusion, of pain, of cycles, of suffering, of bondage. Sometimes we wonder, how come I'm not getting the results that somebody else is getting? It's probably because the Holy Spirit is trying to lead you, but we're taking a different route. God has a plan for your life. And this is a message for you, not for the person next to you. God has a plan for your life specifically. And he wants to use you for great and mighty things. And he wants to bless you. And he loves you with all of his heart that he would give his son to forgive you of your sins. And he loves you so much. He has a plan for you. But are you ready to walk with him? How many are ready to walk with the Holy Spirit tonight? In order to get to this place, we need his help. We need him to guide us. And to lead, lead us, without him, we will not get there. I want to cover my, very quickly my first point is this. Whoever you surrender to will lead you. Whoever you surrender to is leading you and guiding you. And you may be thinking, well, I'm not surrendered to anybody. I answer to myself. Well, you don't. You're serving somebody. You just can't serve two masters. There's only one person you're serving. You're either going to be serving God and, and heeding to his will and his plan for your life, or you're going to be serving the enemy, serving even your flesh and your own desires. There's only one or two ways you can go, but you can't play the middle ground in this. You can't play both sides. You have to choose who is going to lead you. You can't be a Laker fan and a Clipper fan at the same time. It's not biblical. It's not okay. I know they're both from L.A., but we know who the true L.A. team is. Come on, somebody. All right, let me get off. NBA season started, so I'm getting hyped. So. Look at Romans 8, verses 5 through 8. It says this. For those who live according to the flesh have their outlook shaped by the things of the flesh. What an interesting scripture here. Those who live according to the flesh have their outlook shaped by the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit have their outlook shaped by the things of the spirit. For the outlook, somebody say outlook. The outlook of the flesh is death. But the outlook of the Spirit is life and peace. How many need some peace? You know that when there's, there's times in my life, I, I start, I, I realize I start getting a little stressed out. There's, I got things I have to do. There's, there's tasks I got to tackle. And then there's this bill I have to pay. And then I forgot I was supposed to call this person back. And all these things start to go on. And I realize in those moments, when I start getting stressed, I realize this. I'm leaning on me a little too much. And I need to lean on the one 
the God of peace, the one who has peace for me, the one who has my plan set in stone, the one who does not give me worry or doubt or fear. The Bible says, I did not give you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. How many need some peace in this place? In moments we start feeling stressed, we got to remind ourselves, we got to get back to the place, back to the source of peace. What does that word outlook mean? The word outlook is this phrase in the Greek, it's phronema. And this means directing one's mind towards something. It means this, the thoughts or the purposes behind something. So when the Bible was saying this, for those that live according to the flesh, they have their outlook shaped by the things of the flesh. In other words, the Bible is saying when we surrender to our flesh, we're shaping our intentions, we're shaping our purposes, we're shaping our thoughts, we're shaping our desires all by the flesh, which eventually leads to death. Let me make it very, very simple. Let me make it a little more simple for you. Whatever you expose yourself to becomes your desire. See, we wonder why we look at someone and we say, man, they just are so on fire for God. I don't ever want to get in my word. I don't ever want to pray. I don't ever want to seek the things of God. How come everyone around me is so on fire except me? Well, it's probably because we've been exposing ourselves to so much toxicity that we start to desire toxicity in our life. Why? How come, how come I can't seem to overcome these desires? How come they seem to be overcoming me? Well, maybe we got to change our diet. What, is, what are you consuming? What does your diet look like right now? I, I, want, I wonder if we actually put a timer on how much time you spent on Instagram or on YouTube versus how much time we spent in the Word. That will probably show us really in reality, oh, okay, I could see why my desires are what they are. You know, actually, your phones do that now, right? Your phones have this little app inside of them, and you can see how much time you're actually spending on social media. That's scary. I dare you open up that part of your app, and then when you see it, just repent. Get on your knees and just say, Lord, I'm sorry, God. Forgive me. You know that statistics say that we get to, uh, the, human, the average human, the average adult, when we get to the end of our life, will have spent up to six years on social media. Six years, whole years of your life on social media. You know what that means? We're, and the reality is this. We're dying six years sooner than we need to. We're losing six years of our life because we have dedicated and exposed ourselves and feeding ourselves with so much nonsense, videos of pranks, videos of cats playing, videos of people, of kids falling, and we're laughing at these little poor little kids. All this stuff we're watching, and God is saying this, all this time you're spending in that, I have been wanting to speak to you. And then we say, God, how come, why haven't I heard you? God, how come, I, I beg to hear your voice. And God is saying, the times I'm trying to speak to you, you are covered your face into social media or to other things. And God's saying, I want to speak to you. I have a plan for you. I have a purpose for you. I have great things for you. I have a blessed life in store for you. I love you. Just speak to me because I got everything you need. Come on, I know this message may feel, it may, it may feel like, come on, come on, bro, don't be, don't be messing with my Instagram life. But the reality is this, if we, if we think that Instagram and social media stuff is just a lie and it's just, you know, just us taking a little breather and a break, we don't realize that we're getting caught in a, in a trap, in a, in a chamber where we're getting chained up. And the devil's saying, it's not so bad, it's not so, it's not so difficult, but the reality is, is when anything that's taking the time that God wants to spend with you, we're going we're gonna to miss out on the voice of the Holy Spirit, what he wants to do in your life. Okay, let me get off my soapbox about social media. Because I'm telling you right now, I, I'm, I'm just as guilty as you. I'm just as guilty. But, but I know this, that if I'm going to fulfill the purposes that God has for me, I got to start, I got to learn to put things to the side. I got to learn how to close my door and lock it behind me. And I got to learn how to spend time in the presence of God. And I got to learn how to say, Holy Spirit, Speak to me. I need to hear from you. I need this. I need your plan for my life. I need your word for my life. I, I need, Lord God, I need to hear from you. I need you to lead me. Someone say, Holy Spirit, lead me. How many need the Holy Spirit to lead you tonight? 
Another point I want to share with you is this. The Holy Spirit will always tell you where to go. If we're going to walk with the Holy Spirit, know this. He has a plan. And he knows what steps he wants you to take. Going back to that scripture in John 14, verse 16, it says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. What does that word advocate mean? That word advocate is actually comes from this word parakletos. And the word para is two words brought together. Para means beside. And the second word is kaleo, which means to call. In other words, the Holy Spirit's mission, he's been assigned, to, he's been called to walk beside you. He's been called to, to move with you. He's been called to guide you right next to you, to lead you exactly where you need to go. The Holy Spirit is our advocate. Other words, other names for the Holy Spirit is our counselor, our helper. Uh, 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 even, even words like, here's another word, is our intercessor, even our comforter. God has called the Holy Spirit and assigned him to be beside you, to lead you, and to guide you, to show you what direction to take. If you're ever confused about what you need to do in life, just call on the name of the Lord, and he's going to give you the gift, I believe, of the Holy Spirit to guide you and to lead you and to comfort you in times of need and to guide you when you don't know where to go. The Holy Spirit, his mission is to help you. Someone say, Holy Spirit, help me. The Holy Spirit, he's like a cheat code in life, literally. Just imagine, I remember when I was little, we, I used to play games, video games, and I would get frustrated on a level. You know what I'd do? I'd go to Google, and I'd look up all the cheat codes. I need the cheat codes for infinite health. I need the cheat code for max ammunition. I need the cheat code to just be, have superpowers or just one punch the bad guy and I, I beat the level because I, I can't beat this level. I just can't do it. Give me the cheat codes and I know I'll win. And you know what's so crazy? The Holy Spirit's literally your cheat code in life right now. You think that you're supposed to do all of this life thing by yourself and God's like, okay, go for it. I hope you got it. Good luck, buddy. This is not the way God has designed us to live. God did not design you to live apart from the Holy Spirit. God has designed you to be guided, to be led, to be helped, to be comforted, to be, to be counseled, to be maneuvered, and to be led ultimately by the Holy Spirit. Just imagine God himself who knows the future, who knows the past, who knows all the good things, who's already won the victory, giving you his power to conquer the enemy and to defeat everything that comes your way. Way. he's giving you this that's a cheat code in life so all we got to do is open up our bible which is the cheat code we're cheating sin we're cheating death come on how many know this is true i don't deserve this I do not deserve to stand up here and preach the gospel, but I cheated death because Jesus went to the cross on my behalf and paid for the sin that I should have paid for some of you guys should not be here tonight some of you know that you should be locked up, you should probably be in a hospital bed, you should probably have lost your mind, but the reality is that God saved you, he redeemed you, he set you free, he gave you a new beginning, he gave you a new start, he gave you the cheat code in life, and he's saying this, the debt that you should have paid, I put that on my son Jesus, and Jesus went to the cross and said, I'm going to pay the debt. Come on, how many know that's a cheat code in life? God is good. The Holy Spirit will always lead you the right way. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. He will show you which path to take. Have you ever been at a crossroads and not sure what to do? He will show you which path to take. Have you ever wondered, man, should I, should I just cuss them out really quick or not? He's going to show you which path to take. If you've ever wondered whether you should meditate on the offense or meditate on the pain, he's going to show you in that moment which path to take. 
If you ever wondered, man, I wonder if I should jump in there and take and get baptized like all those 50 people on stage tonight. He's going to show you which path to take. He's going to reveal this to you. You'll never have to be worried that you will be led down the wrong path by the Holy Spirit. You will never have to worry if God made a mistake in guiding and leading you. If you're ever driving in a car, your spouse is giving you directions. I'm saying you guys, I'm, this doesn't happen to us. My wife's perfect. And I don't do this to her because actually I do do this to her. Let's just be real. And we're trying to give directions and you're like, oh, yeah, you're supposed to turn that way. Oops. And then we got to reroute. God doesn't do that for you. God doesn't say, oops, oh, you were supposed to go that way. My bad. I wasn't paying attention. God doesn't say, oh, I told, I told you left. I meant right. God doesn't lead you down the wrong path. God doesn't make a mistake on where you should go. And you may feel like you're in a, it may be a mistake. You may feel uncomfortable, but trust God. You don't got to trust me. Trust God that he will never lead you down the wrong path. He will always get it right 100% of the time. You can trust him even if it feels scary or uncomfortable. Trust God. Someone say, trust God. You know, the Holy Spirit will also tell you, he'll confirm to you when you've gone down the right path. What a blessing from God. He will give you peace, not confusion. He will, he will show you, he will reveal to you, you're on the right path. Look at Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21. This is the NET version. It says, you will hear a word spoken behind you saying, this is the correct way. Walk in it. Whether you are heading to the right, or to the left. I'm so thankful that, that, you know, there's other religions all over the world right now where they're doing all kinds of traditional acts. They're obeying the law to the T, and yet they do not know if they're saved. That you ask them, there's different religions all over the world. They can say, are you going to heaven? Say, I hope so. Are you obeying your, your law, your book of law? They'll say, yeah, I'm obeying everything. I'm praying this many times a day. I'm doing this. I'm doing all. I'm obeying everything to the T. So are you going to heaven? I don't know. Imagine living your entire life and fearing death, not knowing if you're on the right path. But the Holy Spirit, he's so good that he affirms in your spirit. And he will tell you, you're in the right path. You're in the right place. Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. You don't have to go to any other place. You don't have to go to any other destination. You don't have to try and do all these X, Y, and Z. Jesus is the only way. God made it simple for you. And he's going to tell you, you're in the right place. And I want you guys to know tonight and online, you're in the right place tonight. God has a plan and a purpose for you. And he's speaking to you tonight. How many believe that? Last point I'll share is this. The Holy Spirit will also tell you where not to go. He'll tell you where to go. He'll also tell you where not to go. There's a story in the Bible in the book of Acts. I won't read the whole story. But Paul, we know Paul, and he got saved, radically saved, and he went on missionary journeys and literally was getting beaten whipped, imprisoned, and nothing stopped him. He went to every single place he was supposed to preach the gospel, and he preached that gospel. But did you know that the Holy Spirit actually prevented him from going to certain places? It says in Acts 16, 7, it said, after they had come to Mysia, they tried to go to Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them. This time, again, he was, he, was, he was being obedient and everything, and then the Spirit said, don't go over there. The Holy Spirit did not permit him to go to Bithynia. And in the same way, the Holy Spirit will also tell us, when we're beginning to look down a path that we're not supposed to go on, he'll prompt us before we walk down that path. Before we take a step, he'll say, don't go down that road. Don't take another step. Turn back around. How many know that's true? Sometimes your old friends call you. How many know what I'm talking about? They know you start going to church. You gave your life to God. You got baptized. And then the phone rings. And it's your old buddies. It's your old friends. And it's their birthday. 
And they're saying, you know, we're just going to go to a restaurant. We're going to have a dinner, a couple drinks, probably a little dancing, nothing, nothing crazy, but I, I miss you so much, you should come. And you're thinking, yeah, that would be nice. I know they'll have little drinks, but, but you know, I'll, I'll kind of hold back on that. A little dancing, maybe it won't hurt nobody. Uh, mm, you know, I, I'll just, I'll just uh, if it gets a little crazy, I'll leave. I have, I have some self-control. And, and it's probably true. You probably do have self-control. But the Holy Spirit in that moment may say, don't go. You're saying, oh, I don't know. I might go. But the Holy Spirit is saying, don't go down that path. God is saying, I've taken you out of a dark place. I've taken you out of that place. You once were that way. You once were bound. And I'm going to lead you now to a new place. I'm going to lead you now to a place where you've never been before. Don't go down the old path that you used to be on. The Bible says don't turn back. The Bible says don't quickly forget. The Bible says forget about the past and look forward to what lies ahead. God has a new thing for you. God has a plan for you tonight in Jesus' name. And I believe God is going to do a new thing in your life and we don't have to look back to the past. You know that when we don't follow the prompting of the Holy Spirit, we end up in trouble. It says in Proverbs 29, 18, when people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. Well, how many oh, ex-wild people we had in here? I was, I was going to say how many wild people, but how many ex-wild people we had in here? Or you're still wild. You're like, Jesus, help me. I need you. Here's the reality. If you have no mission, if 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 we're not walking with the Holy Spirit, the truth is this. You're never going to know if you're on the right path or not. If, if, I, if I'm not walking with the Lord, if, 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 if I haven't fully surrendered my life to him, I'll never know. I'll always be in confusion. I'll never know if I'm in the right place. I'll always feel an empty void in my life. There's this, there's this statement that, that I wrote down. It says, no destination equals no direction. If I don't have a mission from the Holy Spirit... Because God has given us, I just want everyone to know this. God has given everybody in here a purpose. He's created a purpose and a mission for every person in here tonight. And until I call upon the name of the Lord, until I surrender to him, I will never come to know what that purpose is. And, until I, and if I don't know what that purpose is, I'll have no sense of direction in my life. It's time for us to finally surrender and say, God, I'm ready to hear from you. God, I'm ready to give my life to you. I want to walk with you. I want to live for you. I want every moment that I live, I want it to be dedicated for you, God. It's only when we have destination that we have a purpose. And I'll close with this. We can bring the worship team out. It says in 2 Corinthians 7, 9. It's the last scripture I'll share. It says, now I am happy. I'm not happy because you were made sad. I'm happy because your sadness led you to turn away from your sins. You became sad just as God wanted you to. So you were not hurt in, a, in, you were not hurt in any way by us. What does that scripture mean? You know what the Holy Spirit, he's so good to us that he'll tell us when we've gone down the wrong path with this word, it's called conviction. You know there's a difference between conviction and condemnation. Conviction is this word that brings us to the light. It's a, it's a type of correction that draws us towards God. Condi a spirit of condemnation, on the other hand, it's guilt and shame that pushes you away from God. But the Bible says Jesus did not come to condemn the world. Did you know the Holy Spirit will never do or say anything to try and push you or steer you further away from God. The conviction of the Holy Spirit is designed and meant to draw you closer to him. If you've ever veered off track, if you've ever slipped and fallen, you've probably felt the conviction of the Holy Spirit. It's that feeling inside where you know, I messed up. I shouldn't have done that. This isn't God trying to kick you when you're down. The devil will try to kick you when you're down. But the Holy Spirit will gently remind you you're loved. The Holy Spirit will gently remind you you still have a purpose, son. You still have a purpose, daughter. The Holy Spirit will remind you 
I have great plans for you. The Holy Spirit will remind you, Jesus paid for that sin on the cross. The Holy Spirit will remind you, you're forgiven. You're redeemed. You're washed by the blood of Jesus. You're no longer a slave to sin. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. You are the head and not the tail. You do not belong to sin and death anymore. The Holy Spirit will bring you back to a place through conviction. There's times we may grieve. We may feel sad for the things we've done. And this is the Holy Spirit's design to bring you back to God. Tonight, I want to encourage you. If you've ever felt like you've messed up so much that God will never bring you back, that's condemnation. That's a lie from the devil. God loves you so much. He loves you so much. He was willing to give his son, Jesus Christ, to have a relationship with you. Just think about that. How much love does someone have to have for you? To be willing to go to the cross and pay for all of your debt, that's true love. Even though we've done nothing to earn it, nothing to deserve it, nothing to say, God, I'm entitled to your love. We've done nothing but sin and, and, and miss the mark. And God says, I still love you. And I'll still draw you back to me. The Holy Spirit tonight is leading people here in this room to his love. Tonight, I want you to know this. You don't have to go leave this church and try to clean up your life and then come back to God. He's leading you to God with all your pain, with all the mistakes, with, with everything, even the, the ugly feeling, even if you feel unworthy, all of that. He's saying, I want you to come. I want you to come to me with all of that baggage you're holding. Let me take it off of you. Let me give you a new life and a new beginning. Jesus is going to do that for you tonight. I want to ask you this. If you're saying in here, I want to walk with the Holy Spirit. And I want him to lead me. I feel like I've been living for myself. I feel like I've been going down the wrong path. But I can feel, I know the Holy Spirit is calling me tonight. He's leading me and he's guiding me. If you're saying tonight that you want to finally answer that call, and you may feel that right now, you may feel this tug. I remember when I was a teenager, I was listening to somebody preach the gospel. I was listening to someone tell me about Jesus, telling me about this same love. And I don't know what it was, but I could feel like a tug right here in my stomach. You know what that was? That was a that was a touch of the Holy Spirit drawing me. He's saying, I'm calling you to myself. And maybe you don't feel that, but you know. You know in your heart, God is calling you tonight. Know this. God loves you, and he has a plan for you, and he wants a relationship with you. I'm going to count to three. And when I count to three, everybody in this room who is saying, I'm ready to surrender my life to Jesus Christ. I'm done doing it my own way. I'm done living for me, and I want to live for Jesus. I want to give him my everything, my pain, my baggage, my sin. I want to be forgiven. I want a brand new beginning, and I want a new start tonight. If that's you, God has a plan for you, and he wants to give you this gift of salvation tonight. If that's you, you want to receive forgiveness of your sins, and you want to receive salvation, and you want to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit tonight, then when I count to three, I want you to raise your hand. And there's nothing you have to do to earn this. There's nothing you can do to earn this. He's calling you tonight with his love and with his mercy. He's saying, come to me. And if this is you, I want you to raise your hand when I count to three. Are you ready? Are we ready? One, two, three. Three, you're saying, that's me, that's me. I see those hands. I see you, I see you, I see you guys, I see you. I see all those five, six, seven hands over here, eight hands to my left. I see you guys here in the middle. I see you back there. I see you in that back row right there. I see you guys right here. Come on, can we give a round of applause for those that are saying, I'm ready to surrender. I'm so proud of you, young man. I'm proud of you. Yes. Can we do this? If you raise your hand, I wanted you to do one more bold thing for me really quick. If you raise your hand, can you just stand up where you're at, right at your seat? I know it sounds crazy, but look, Jesus stood on a cross for you so that you can be saved and set free. Come on, all those that are standing right now, let's give them a round of applause. They're saying, I'm giving my life to Jesus. Let's give them a standing ovation. Come on, let's clap for them. Let's clap. Let's get excited. This is a big moment. 
always make a way. Let's do this. If you stood up right now, I want you to make your way to the front. We have a whole team up here that we want to congratulate you. Why don't you just come out to the aisle, wherever you're at, and make your way to the front. Even if you're in the back row right now, come on up. Come on up. And can we give them a big hand? Let's give them a big hand as they, get, as they come up to receive Jesus tonight. Come on. You will make a way. He's a good God. He loves you so much. He has a plan for your life. There's no better life to live than the life God has for you. I've never met anybody in my life who has regretted being free. Jesus tonight wants to set you free. Any pain from, de from depression, from anxiety, from anger, from addiction. He wants to set you free tonight. And I believe that what Jesus did on the cross is saying this. Jesus broke every chain, all sin and death, so that you can be forgiven and have a brand new start. For those that are up here tonight, we're going to help. We're going to help you. We're going to lead you and guide you. There's classes here. They're discipleship classes. These classes are designed to teach you, to train you, to equip you, to really truly learn how to walk with the Holy Spirit at a whole nother level. And I believe that after tonight, you'll never be the same again. The person in front of you, they're going to pray with you and they're going to get you connected to your next step. And everybody at the altar, we know what to do. We open our app, click the I Got Saved banner. Let's help them get signed up. We need a few more altar workers up here. And, and we'll be ready to go. How many are thankful for all these souls that just got saved tonight? This is awesome. Let's do this. Let's pray. Bow our heads with me. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, thank you for going to the cross for me. You paid the price that I was supposed to pay. You didn't deserve it. You're perfect. Thank you, Jesus. Forgive me of my sin. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose from the dead so that I can be saved and forgiven. From this moment forward, my life belongs to you. I give you my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Holy Spirit, fill me now. Lead me, guide me, and walk with me everywhere I go. I give my life to you, to your direction, to your leading, and to your guidance. Thank you for helping me. And every day, I will acknowledge you and your plan for my life. I give you everything. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Come on, church. Can we give God one more shout of praise for what he's done tonight? I want you not to forget. This is awesome. This Friday night, Pastor Marco is going to be preaching a word to all the young adults this Friday at 7 p.m. If you're a young adult, get a message from your pastor. It's going to be powerful. And then this Sunday, the Crossroads drama is happening at the Pomona campus. You want to miss it. Don't forget, next Wednesday, Prophet Rob is going to be in the building. It's going to be powerful. We love you so much, church. God bless you. If you need prayer, come up here. I'd love to pray with you. We have a team up here ready to pray with you. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Remember, if God is for you, there's no one who can come against you. God bless you, church.